Welcome to the Nature Here TV show. Today we introduce to you the Vancouver Audubon Society. We spent a very exciting day with them on their rare bird run. That adventures was led by Arden Hagden, field trip chairperson of the Vancouver chapter on October 12th. Arden has been birding for 34 years and leading for 20 years, usually about five to six day trips, not including fundraisers days that may go from four to nine days, including Florida, Arizona, Texas, and Ohio. The Vancouver Audubon Society can be reached on their website at www.vancouveraudubon.org. On our second part of today's show, you can see lots of fascinating interviews about why do I like birds and an interview with Al O'Connor from Washington's Waterfowl Association and much, much more. Most of these interviews were made at the Ridgefield Bird Festivals. The Nature Here TV show is very happy to share these people's enthusiasm for birds. Please enjoy our fascinating bird tales. <laughs> And all of my birding time, I've never had a bad day birding. There's always something interesting going on. Either a bird you're familiar with doing something very different, or a brand new bird. I'm Martin Hagen, and I'm the field trip chairperson of Vancouver Audubon. And we're going up to Tacoma today to try to find a ladyback gull. And if we find it right away, we're going to head up to Point No Point and try for a little go up there. Those are both rare birds for this area. We're in Tacoma and we're at the Gogla Haiti wetlands. It's an industrial area of the city. Last night we made up our mind that we we're going to chase this gull, uh, this ladyback gull, and the little gull that's up at point, no point. And so that's, it's usually a last minute thing because we don't know what's rare and being seen. To come here to try to find this bird, we, I get information from um, eBird. They send me emails and also we get information from tweeters. They all come to my smartphone. Um, they send maps so you can find the place and click on it and go to right through a map to shows you where to go and You know exactly where the bird is. There's a group of western gulls on the water here a group of maybe Oh, I don't know 20 gulls and various plumages There's some a few mallards here, you can look through my scope and see them. Time of year, they're not in the breeding plumage, so they're not quite so stunning, but they're, uh, there's three different teal species that you can find in our area. Cinnamon teal, green-winged teal, and blue-winged teal. This is the only one that we'll find in the winter. and still here. Pretty neat. We're looking for a bird called a sladyback gull, which is an unusual bird in the state of Washington. It's real similar to a western gull which is a large dark back gull that we have here in the state but there are some minor differences to it that you can that you have to get a really good look at through a scope uh, to tell the difference make sure it's a um, uh, the slady back and not the western gull it's not so easy to do you actually have to check the minor differences to see if that's what it is or not. It's amazing how often something unusual shows up like this bird or a warbler or any other type of bird that shows up. Say it should be in the southeast of the United States or it should be in Costa Rica or something else but all of a sudden it shows up here and it'll stay in the same area sometimes for a month you know and people will come from all over the place they'll go to a certain area uh, sometimes people list it out the uh, the coordinates and you just like go park your car in the coordinates and start looking around and you find the bird. They, they, they'll they find an area that they'll stake out and they'll stick around for a while. Depending on how rare it is, you could get them from clear across the country. We had a bird called a red wing here in Olympia maybe three, four years ago. People came from all over the country to see it because it was so unusual. So it just depends on the, the magnitude of the rarity of the bird. I think we're going to check the buildings because sometimes sits on the buildings here. And um, we'll see if we can find it there. It was here uh, for a long time last year, for several weeks. And so if you want to see it, just came up here and wait and it would come by. This is just only one bird? One, yeah. Just one. <laughs> That's usually what a rarity is, only one of them shows up. And sometimes it'll stay for a day, sometimes it's a couple of weeks, sometimes it's all winter. Depends on how they feel, I guess. 
Huh. Looks dark, but it's so far away it probably that's does look. look at it. No, that's a... My name is Fred Dobson. I live in Vancouver, Washington. A new member of the Vancouver Audubon Society, and I'm here on a field trip and uh, trying to learn the western birds. I'm Susan. I've mostly been birding on the East Coast for the last 25 years. So this is like learning all over again. Same here, right? <laughs> well, Sorry. there's different species out here. Um, some are the same, but they talk differently. They have accents. Uh, their coloration can be different. So, and the habitat is different. So you're looking for all those variations. They're things you're not quite used to. So it's like learning all over, which is fun. I was telling her about the jays. I mean, pretty yeah. basic, but back home there's only one, one eastern jay. jay. And here you got the scrub jay and the stellar's jay, which, yeah. you know, kind of was interesting. Yeah. Well, I hope we can find this lady black gull and the little gull. I, I've had them before, different places, so, but it'd be a new state bird for me, so. New, new lifeless for me. Yeah, and it, it's, you know, it's just fun, it's the hunt, that's the part of the fun of it, so. And who knows what else might turn up while we're out here. Wow, it's darker, but I don't think it's, it could be. When you go, when you drive a, uh... 130 miles <laughs> to see one bird you want to you want to see it so if you don't see it yeah you're always disappointed especially when you have a group too you know you want to show the whole group this bird and uh, and you don't see it it's yeah it's disappointing some would be a life bird which means they've never seen it before so that's what's called a life bird we're going to point no point it's a peninsula in the Puget Sound and there's a lighthouse there and that's where the little gull is being seen. Called a little gull. About a week ago, a guy named Matt Bartels found it in a flock of hundreds of Bonaparte skulls. And it's another bird that should be way, way, way up north. We're looking for that little gull, which would be a rarity here. I'm Eric Bjorkman. I'm president of Vancouver Audubon. We're out on a field trip, which is a, this particular month, it's a rare bird run. And we're from Vancouver all the way up to Point No Point, which is uh, on the sound here in, in uh, northwestern Washington. Um, we have field trips nearly monthly, more often closer to home, whether up the gorge or some of the uh, wildlife refuges near home. But once a year, maybe twice a year, we do this rare bird run where we take off after something unusual showing up. We're watching a flock of Bonaparte gulls. And the little gull is very similar to a Bonaparte's gull. So they're, but they're a little bit different. So you're looking for, there's hundreds of Bonaparte's gulls out there. So you're looking for one smaller gull that's, that's different than those. It has a little more black on the head and the wing pattern's a little bit different. And that's what we're looking for. But they're so far away that it's difficult. And the wind blowing doesn't help either. And the water's pretty choppy, so all you see is their head pop up every once in a while. These are way out there. Yeah, they're way out. The Jaeger's going to have a distinct wing pattern. They're kind of far out, so it's really hard to figure out what you have. Oh, it's great. It's a beautiful spot. I'd rather be nowhere else today than right here. It's wonderful. Seeing some birds. I haven't found the little gull yet, but it's a wonderful place. So I'm enjoying it. The day's great. Well, there's a lot of human skulls out there, which are confusing everything because they kind of look like, the, and they're harassing the smaller gulls. They look like the uh, Jaeger that we're trying to find. Um, we've seen surf scoter and uh, common myrrh go by. Common myrrh looks like a little football, black on top, white on the bottom, with little wings that are beating really fast. Really cute. Two or three different kinds of gulls. And Arden saw an auklet. Rhinoceros. Rhinoceros auklet. I'm not sure what they were yet. Yeah, they dove into the water. Probably auklets. Well, we've seen Bonaparte's gulls and Hermann's gulls and Glaucus wing gulls and uh, rhinoceros auklet, common myrrh. Uh, lots of uh, double crested cormorants. So, yeah, that's a, oh, there's that's a, a harrier. Is it? Yeah. The day so far. <laughs> oh. 
Uh, slow. The good part, the good news is it's not raining. The bad news is we're not seeing a lot of birds. Uh, especially the ones that we wanted to see, we're not seeing, so. Uh, it's kind of a long drive so far for not much. I think it's a good day. <laughs> Here, Austin's out here now. Oh, dove again. Yeah. <laughs> well, right now we're on the interior of Puget Sound. Um, up north of us would be the where the water goes in and out to the Pacific Ocean. Some birds like being in in the interior more than out on the ocean. So, but we did see the MERS and the um, rhinoceros oclids, so those are good birds that are coming into the bay. This cormorant you see in a lot of places. You'll see it on the interior bays and you'll see it out on the uh, coastline. You see it on the east coast and the west coast. So um, nine times out of ten you're probably looking at a double crested cormorant. No. Double crested cormorants are our most common one and uh, if we're lucky we'll get to see uh, maybe pelagic and a brant's cormorant. So there's three cormorants in the sound and this is the most common one, the double crested. It's also the biggest. The, there's a smaller pelagic cormorant, which my um, writing companion said that you could see here within the uh, Puget Sound, and also Brant um, cormorant. So we might pick up some of those, but they would be far fewer than the double crested cormorants, which you can see if you look out on the pier, they're sitting all over the place and enjoying themselves. So. Mm -hmm. Cormorant's a fisher. Uh, they, they go, they dive and go after fish, so you'll see them riding low in the water and then boom, they're down looking for fish. Um, these are the birds that over in, I think it's Japan, that they tie the string around the necks and they go fishing with them. They'll take them out on a boat and they'll let them dive for a fish and they can't swallow it because of the string around their neck, so they take the fish and that's their fi the way they catch fish. I guess they let them swallow one once in a while. Oh, I think the first time you ever see them in the wild. So this is good for me. First time out birding, so this is this is very exciting. Here we saw killed deer, black blade plover, several horned greens. which is the cutest little kind of rounded seabird. There's two marble murelets over there. We started in, I think, 97 was the year. We, uh, some friends took us out to uh, a, uh, look at a bird near the deaf school in, in Vancouver and we, we got out of the car and they gave us binoculars told us to look up in the tree and the tree was full of a bird called a, a western tanager which is a gorgeous bird and we both looked at that and thought at the same time how could we have lived here our whole lives and never seen this bird before so that's what got our interest going we started getting more and more involved in it and before long we were uh, we were hooked Please enjoy the area and come on down and, and see our bird fest and visit our sanctuaries and enjoy Ridgeview. I am Elena Martinson and I like birds because I personally think they are fascinating, just all about them. My name is Kate and I like birds because in my next life I will come back as one. Hi, my name is Linda and I love birds and I love the bird fest here in Ridgefield and I love the refuge. My name is Donna Sherman and I love birds. I have a floating home in Ridgefield, Washington 
and I see sandhill cranes and blue heron. I love ravens. I don't see many there. But birds, to me, speak of life and joy and beauty. I love birds. I'm Carrie Martinson, and um, I like I like birds because I think it'd be fascinating to be able to fly, and um, I think they're beautiful and all the different colors and sounds that they make. So that's why I love birds. Why do I like birds? Well, because I like watching them fly around, you know, and feeding, and just whatever they do, you know, um, they're very colorful. They're very interesting. Hello, my name is Veronica and I live in Ridgefield and I've lived here for a little, close to a year and a half now. And I do love birds and I love our bird sanctuary. It's a wonderful, wonderful walk. My name is Chris Kissinger. I'm from Petersburg, Alaska and I like birds. Uh, they're very entertaining. They're important to our environment and it's a good hobby in the winter to feed the birds. Hi, I'm Clayton Martinson and my favorite bird is the eagle. Uh, I'm from Alaska and we used to see them in the narrows a lot and you would see them catch fish and um, you would see them sit on the posts and you would see them swarm up in the sky and I know that the eagle is our national symbol. They're cool and they're big. They're <laughs> powerful. They're dangerous. <laughs>I love hummingbirds, and we keep a hummingbird feeder going uh, all winter long because they depend on us for their livelihood, and we love to watch how they dart back and forth and even how they fight over their food, and I, I don't think there's a bird that I don't like. I love to see the great blue herons and the egrets. I mean, birds are wonderful. My favorite bird? Oh. I guess uh, the raptors, the bald eagles, uh, you know, the northern harriers, I really, there's a lot of them out in the refuge. We have mainly what we see are chickadees and juncos and um, thrushes and uh, flickers. <laughs> and then the deer come and eat out of our bird feeders. We keep the deer from our bird feeders by just keeping hanging them higher and higher all the time. Um, well, I think robins are very pretty. I just love their colors and yes, that's probably my favorite bird. <laughs> my favorite bird would have to be like an owl just because like they're just so unique looking and kind of crazy. <laughs> uh, I've seen them a couple times, not too many, but like it's really, really cool. And I like songbirds and um, little finches, mainly. I have fed birds, but um, we have a big bird bath that we have fun looking and watching, see what comes when and that. I like all birds. I like crows, stellar jays. I'd like to be a nice, colorful stellar jay. My favorite bird of the moment is the hummingbird because we have them. And the, we have the Annas here in this area, and it's so unique because they're only unique to our area. I do go birding at the several wildlife refuges. Um, well, I moved from Alaska, so we saw a lot of seabirds in there on the coast, and um, here we'll see them just in front of our house. And, I feed birds in my backyard. I give them peanuts and seed and millet and fresh water. Just to wake up and hear the birds chirping in the morning. Or as my husband says, sometimes we hear the birds screaming. <laughs> Hi, my name is Nicole and I, I have hummingbirds at my house. I have a feeder and um, I I love birds, but my favorite kind of bird is a hummingbird, and they really inspire me to to do um, 
many things. I, I, I love photography and I love drawing. And, and one of my favorite things to do is draw hummingbirds. So I, I, I draw things like this. And then I like taking, I like doing photography and I like to print them on mouse pads. And hummingbirds, they, they are like tiny flying jewels and they, and they warm my heart with good memories. Hi, I'm Veronica again, and um, I just want to uh, inform the viewers how important it is to clean a bird, hummingbird feeder. You can't just leave it out there and expect it to stay clean on its own. It has to be cleaned every two to three days and you have to clean it well, and you have to remove any any uh, soap residue. It has to be pure, and and then you have to make your your uh, very fine sugar and water. I put uh, about a quarter a cup of sugar, and then I fill it with boiling water, and then I boil it for uh, up to a cup, and then I boil it for three minutes and let it cool, and then place it into the clean bird feeder. And my birds, my hummingbirds are happy and healthy and beautiful and I'm sure uh, they'll be around for a long time. So I would advise anyone who has hummingbirds, you can't just put a feeder out there and keep adding water to it. This is very dangerous. It grows bacteria and uh, so please don't do that. You're better off not feeding them and letting, letting them eat from flowers or to migrate than to just uh, put a feeder out and uh, keep without cleaning it. So that's my advice. Have fun. Okay, I'm Albert O'Connor. I'm the conservation coordinator for the Washington Waterfowl Association Lower Columbia Chapter. And um, we're primarily in the conservation, uh, Hunters for Conservation. And we also uh, support hunting at the Ridgefield Wildlife Refuge and the Shillipoo uh, State Wildlife Refuge. Lead shot? Well, yeah, we don't. We, we use steel shot. That's federal requirement. Now it is a state requirement on all upland game hunting. So, yeah, we just comply with the law. And, you know, we do very well with the, with the steel shot. So. There's no problem, and we don't want we don't want to kill kill birds with lead shot. You can no longer use lead shot on in upland game hunting in the state of Washington. That means pheasants, quail, and and you cannot use it for waterfowl either. I think it, what we would like to present is what we have right here. We all create adverse impacts of wildlife. It's not just hunters. Everybody creates, and I have a handout that shows that. And then uh, Hunters for Conservation. I mean, we are, we're in charge of the state duck stamp. We distribute it. Uh, a lot of that funds go to um, purchasing lands and conserving wetlands for waterfowl and all kinds of other critters that actually um, preserve the ecosystem, which has turtles, snails, and all kinds of stuff in it. I guess that's what, and then Shillipu, we would like to uh, see that uh, stop. We don't want to see them flood that for rearing fish habitat. We would like to see it uh, used as a wildlife area for all of the, the wildlife, not just for fish or waterfowl or all that. My name is Guy McQuethy from Renton, Washington. Um, today I've seen the usual assortment pretty much of birds out here. The, uh, the uh, Bonaparte's gulls, uh, the treat was the Jaeger, the parasitic Jaeger that was harassing them earlier. Um, quite a few um, good numbers of marbled murlets out at foul weather. So, um, decent day out here. Still hoping for the little gull to show up. Uh, why I like birding? It's an excuse to get out here and uh, see what I can see out here. 
Um, I'm a county lister, so I've listed birds on every county I see in Washington, and that gives me an excuse to go out and visit all the far-flung corners of Washington State. And it's just a good excuse to get out. I was down at Vancouver Bottoms once during uh, when the, the geese were in, and I came around a corner, and there was probably somewhere between five and 10,000 geese. Most of them were cackling geese. But there was also a good number of snow geese in there and several Ross's geese and greater white front geese. So it was a really good assortment of geese. All in the, more or less right outside Vancouver, right next to the sewage treatment plant. <laughs> so that was a good experience.